Hello, my name is Monica Kretschmer, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Universal Women's Network, Women of Inspiration Awards, and this is the Women of Inspiration podcast, where we speak with women who lead, inspire, and motivate. This is a special series called Where Are They Now?, where we interview inspiring leaders from the Women of Inspiration Awards and tap into them and see where they are now in their journey after becoming award recipients. So today, a very special guest. I I, I know you're going to enjoy this episode. Um, with me today is Patricia Karen Gagich. Um, she is a 2020 Woman of Inspiration Lifetime Award Achievement recipient. She is also a Woman of Inspiration book contributor um, and also has been very instrumental um, part of the Universal Women's Network as an ambassador and part of our selection committee. So um, thank you for all your support, Patricia, there. Uh, Patricia is an international contemporary artist. She is also an award-winning author, philanthropist, meditation specialist, drummer, and probably one of the most interesting women you've ever met in your life. You're spiritually guided. You, I, I am so excited about this interview, Patricia. So welcome uh, to the Woman of Inspiration podcast again, because you have so much to update us on. Wow. Thank you, Monica. And uh, super, super wishing you Happy New Year. Obviously, we're hitting 2024, really with the pedal to the metal. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's a good, good thing. It's a good year. Year of the dragon. The year of the dragon. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, um, it's big. I, I can tell you it's really big. And I want to start um, by sharing with the listeners why it's so important here that we're having these conversations with leaders like yourself. Uh, I mean, you in particular, 2020 Woman of Inspiration Lifetime Achievement. You didn't stop at a Lifetime Achievement Award. I've been watching you like a speed bullet freight train move through the past couple of years um, since that award and you continue to evolve. And I'm going to um, just pull a quote from the book here, Patricia, and I want to start there. When I realized my life was my own to create, I knew I owned the stage. I claimed it as my own. So do you remember writing that for the Woman of Inspiration book? Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about that statement? Because I think it's so important about really believing and owning that stage and just going for it. it, it it's what's really super amazing is that I, I remember that saying, however, circumstances and events that have followed really nailed it even deeper. So one thing that I, I want to share, because I think it's important is I've been involved with, you know, various mastermind groups and certain people. Very recently, I was invited by actor Glenn Morshower and Ken Walls, who's, whose group I have been part of for some time. But Glenn invited me to join his acting class as an observer in November. And I'm online watching these incredible actors from around the world and, and literally, this is something that takes place from like, he starts at like 11 o'clock in the morning until four in the afternoon, then they break, he comes back on and they can go all night or they two or three in the morning. There's no question. This is a hardcore group that he's teaching. And there are directors, actors, people of significance. As an observer, because it's a Zoom call and they're online, it's not their live acting class, the actors say something very technical. So instead of like as a dancer, it's like three, four, five, and then you start. It's actually what they say. And it was this camera to me. And it hit me that that was exactly what I have been feeling when in that quote you've just said actually is is where my brain was at, but it never I would I I never really had a way of expressing it. So I kept listening to myself thinking the per particular reason it came up was there was an individual actor who, in my mind, she was, she's absolutely incredible, but her poise and her level of confidence and her ability to command that this is who she is. This is what I'm doing. This is where I am at. 
And and even though camera to me means technically the camera's on her and not the person beside her, camera to me became such a focus that I went back to Glenn after and I told him, and and of course this breaks, this is a breakthrough sort of moment. And so we're going to work, we're going to be playing with that as, as a, a possible, you know, teaching book. We're not really sure, but it's going somewhere. But the idea of camera to me is we put the lens on ourselves very rare. Like really, we're always mm -hmm. out there. The lens is on my family. The lens is on my mom. The lens is on my sister. The lens is on my husband. The lens is on my daughter. The lens is on my grandkids. The lens is on the people who work in the office. And, and you're doing all of that. And at the very same time, your level and degree of importance, your integrity is, is really what's allowing you to wake up in the morning and to continue to thrive. So the idea of paying attention to yourself so significantly really, really imports the value of who we are. And I, I'm, you know, I, I'm sort of giving you a post energy of, of what that quote was in 2020. And now we're into 2024 and there's still an added level of something which is significant uh, to continue to continually put that yogic pressure on yourself to not necessarily be all and be everything, but actually know that you are so relative, that you are so vital, so important and and uh, it's like yeah the old saying put the oxygen mask on yourself first, but it's it's the it's the it's the creating of also being logical like does this really truly fit have I bitten off more than I can chew was it just that it was this or was it that or or what was my what was my real purpose so so playing playing big in yourself doesn't necessarily mean you're going to take over the world. But if you play big in what it is that you desire or you dream or you, or you're, you know, looking to accomplish, it's a, it's a good place to start. Yeah. Okay. I had goosebumps when you said camera to me. <laughs> it's powerful. That is very powerful. And it was almost like when you were talking about the camera to someone and then you know, if there's someone that is not, they can say camera to me, but if you don't actually believe True. you should be where you yeah. need to be, it doesn't matter whether you say camera to me, the camera's not going to be on you. The camera's going to be on someone who actually yeah. is owning and claiming and, and confident and believes that they're worthy of the camera on them. Yeah. And this, this, this instance that took place, you know, I, I wasn't expecting that I'd have such an, that that would have such an impact on me because I was really there to observe the acting, to observe their posture, to, to see how, how the um, realities are, are bringing something to the stage for us to watch. But then the element of, of those words became very powerful for me. So I'm using them. I, I'm actually going to take this into a, a, a new level with with possibly Glenn and Ken, because we, you know, they in your in your profession, you assume, well, that's just your that's just what you do. But to an outsider, it was it was like I am now seeing it in a very, very different way. And it was a reflection back to myself because would I have the courage as an actor? I'm not, I don't have that. I'm, I'm a camera shy girl. I, I don't feel I deserve sort of, so to speak, to be on camera that people are going to be interested in watching me perform. My world is a very, very different place. My performance level is writing and it's also doing, you know, painting. But when I felt I was important with, you know, those words, I went, yeah, camera to me. Like I have something to say and it's not just what you're going to read or it's not just what you're going to view. It's actually something from myself. So, but it also triggers is what I have to say, relevant, important, and, and worthy of taking somebody else's time, time up like camera to me, I have something to say, but I want to make sure that what I have to say is really going to be wisdom based. It's going to have value 
that I'm not wasting your time because I like to hear myself talk. And unfortunately, there's a world out there that people are very vociferous. They they just will use up your space. They will use up your time. They will become chronic, if that's the best way to, decide, to sort of express it, express it, to reveal something about their situation that may or it might just be that you're a sounding board and that's okay too. But if it's really a waste of time, then camera to me is also got multiple layers of expression. So this is going to be, you know, I, I'm going to be expanding this. Yeah. Oh, I, that is super exciting because you know that I am all about stepping into the spotlight. And so that camera to me was like, that's it. it you're right. It's multidimensional yeah. um, in that. And I think that owning your story, claiming your space, um, what actually I have a mug today that says, take up space. That's my coffee mug today. You know, being able to actually, oh, let's, oh. I, I'm your inspire others to greatness oh, day. Oh, look at today. us with our matching mugs. <laughs> and we didn't plan this. No, so yours of says not. You're in Calgary. I'm in for those that are listening. And mine <laughs> says, take up space, woman of inspiration. Um, So cheers, Pat, because cheers. that is synchronicity <laughs> at its finest, to be Love honest it. with you. There's so <laughs> many signs. And I know that um, I'm going to quote you again, because I have it here. It says, I believe in its synchronicity and karma. Oh, yeah. Life is a paradise of possibilities and it's not a drive-by experience. We are incalculably unique. And I love your words, incalculably. I can't even say that fast, yeah. um, unique. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, Pat, there's so much to talk about today. Um, I love where it started and we're going to circle back to that. But I really want to shine the spotlight, camera to you, about who you are, what you're doing, and there's so many lessons and learnings that I think that you, and wisdom that you can share with other women, because, you know, stepping into that spotlight, um, owning your story, um, reaching for those great big visions, you seem to do that with such ease and grace. And I think it all started uh, for you, correct me if I'm wrong, was in 1999. So you're, you're, let's go back to the okay. very beginning. And I want to have you share a little bit of that journey. Yeah. And then I want you to start at the 2020 and then, you know, where you're, that's kind of between the 1999 and the 2020 is your foundation. 2020 moving forward is moving you to a whole new level. Everything before 1999, you know, was really more my left side, my, my working at the bank, you know, starting Kirilex Management Group, MLX Property Management, um, that was a, a, a very big part of my world. In addition to that, I was actually, you know, following my passion of, of painting and, and doing photography. But 1999 is the year that um, my husband decided we should go to France. And that story, I think I've shared, but in a nutshell, I ended up walking into this person's home who had a an incredible art collection. I see a painting by a gentleman, Dragan Dragic, and he tells me that he lives in uh, Savoyon near Mont Ventoux in France, and that, you know, that's he, he, he where he was. And I said, Well, you're calling him Dragic, but I said his name is, you know, Serbian, it's Dragic. And he said, No, 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 he's French. Anyways, long story short, again, I end up going to this wonderful place and, and demand to meet this Monsieur Dragic, and I get the opportunity to do that. And it's that's a, a life-changing moment where I had, for the very first time, that camera to me courage that I felt, even though I didn't really know what I was doing, I knew I was being led. I was guided, that synchronicity, the karma. And I... I I guess somehow I impressed him enough that he invited me to come back. And uh, even though he's not a teacher, he decided to take me under his wing. So for, you know, over 20 plus years, 24 or five years now, I have become his, his, you know, his student. He's my maestro. He now calls me maestro. There's no question after this length of time, but what, evolved out of that was a test of my commitment 
to my craft, whether or not I felt I deserved it or not, I wanted to know. So the grueling lessons, the grueling sort of part of learning to, you know, tackle the Matisse palette from his perspective, and then making sure that I created my own my own imagery because it's very easy to want to um, not copy but to emulate the work of someone that you admire so I had to de develop my own style and that's another challenge where you know you're dipping your paintbrush into a, a pot of paint and you're saying but I like what he did so I want to do that so the lesson was again it goes to, to all things you can learn from the best so we have many mentors but you and you steal the part that really resonates with you you steal from the best but you then make it your own and i think that in all aspects of life we come across these you know moments where um you decide should i or shouldn't i and then you make it and and that's what happens so from that perspective I think the commitment that I made to follow through flying to France two or three times a year, buckling down and, and being locked up in the atelier, you know, with Monsieur Dragic, going through painstaking moments where, you know, you screw up, you're told about it, <laughs> you know, and, and yet having the, you know, the energy to want it so badly that, and knowing this was a gift and why would I ever be so foolish to walk away from, from that? If my ego was, was so big that I, I, I didn't feel, you know, that I, I knew if I thought, if I thought I knew everything, then why would I go? So I really was stripped down to, you know, zero and, and you're going to start from scratch. And that's really pretty much what happened. He said, I don't care what's in your brain, but he said, I'm clearing it out. The cat's just now cleared and we are going to let you learn from, from a master point. And um, so that's, that takes us up to kind of like, that's the gist of the story there. Mm -hmm. um, so what's really interesting though, is there's opportunities that are presented to us every single day and we can choose to participate or not. And you choose, you, you, you saw that opportunity and you went to it with a mindset of, of mastery, which is, you know, you have to be able to recognize those moments. And I think Patricia, what you continually do time and time again, is you take those moments and you give it a thousand percent. It's more than a thousand percent. You, you, you're almost blinded because every there's naysayers around you there are people who are looking at you like are you knuck and futz like what the heck are you even what thinking? was that word what is that word knuck and futz <laughs> it just That's a great word because i don't want to swear but no you you become um almost so obsessed like in a state of almost mini madness that you don't you don't see you see what other people don't see. And I think my, my desire, I challenged myself because there were many aspects. He didn't speak English, first of all, and I don't speak fluent Serbian or French. So I had to acquire a language base, which was a combination of those two languages in order for me to even communicate with him to be there. So in the very beginning, I would have my, my, my dictionaries, my, my, my books with me, he'd be speaking in French. I took 32 private, 32 hours of private lessons in order for me to, to go there the first time. He told me, you can't come back if you don't, if we can't communicate. So uh, on top of the stress of everything else, I had to start, you know, learning how to communicate in French and the other part of that was it's not a regular French dialect. It's Provencal. So it's a it's a completely different dialect and they use different words as well. So there was um, more challenges layered into my making this decision. And all I knew 
in my head was I want to be a very, very good artist. I, I do not want people to look at my work and think, oh, she's just wasting our time or I, I just, and also, you know, the capacity that we have to reveal what our soul destiny is comes to us in different ways. For some people, it's writing. For some people, it's, you know, equestrian, um, playing soccer or, or being in a computer lab, writing a new program or building, you know, cryptocurrency algorithms. I mean, we are each, and that goes back to that statement of, of, you know, undeniably, we are unique. We are incalculably unique. We have very, very different, um, our bone structure is different. Our gene pool is different. Whoever we are is how and when we're going to show up as mm. individuals. And when you harness that this was the path you've kind of you you know deep down if you listen to the intuition inside of you if you gather that intuition and you say you know what it is calling me and i am going to do something about it mm -hmm. then you move forward and you and you and all the obstacles that were presented to me i didn't consider them in that capacity to be obstacles they were just moments that need to, to be dealt with and i will get through it and i will figure out an answer because there will be an answer no matter what and that's that's the gift. And I I do know that, you know, he wrote me a letter um, maybe 10 years or more ago. And he basically said that I surprised him that he did not realize that I was so tenacious and the commitment that I had, he said, was written all over me. And he said that that was a key for him because my commitment was also a reflection of my recognition of the integrity around who he was and that I, and I fought for that. I wanted, to, I wanted to let him know how important what he was sharing with me. Now, obviously you add more and more to your own world. It wasn't just all him. There was Tony Urquhart, Painters 11. I mean, I really, really pounded the pavement for myself to learn as much as I could, um, about the craft and, and, and then perfect it to my perfection. Yeah. So Patricia, you are an incredible artist. Um, I've seen your work and actually I love it. Like there's not one piece that I don't absolutely love. They're masterpieces, each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, after visiting your studio, it was, it was really a treat to actually see, everything that you've actually done, which is massive. I mean, the size and the magnitude of these canvases is incredible. Um, but I'm going to share with the listeners and, and you wrote this down in your bio because I just think it's so important. And, and as we talk about, you know, what we can achieve, if we set your mind to achieve, this is what you have achieved. You're represented by the man gallery, which is formerly the 13th street gallery in St. Catharines, Ontario. Mm -hmm. the Art Tour International New York, and the FACEC in France. You've exhibited in the BB International Fine Arts in Switzerland with your work accepted to the art fairs, including Geneva, Berlin, France, Austria, Zurich, <laughs> London, United Kingdom, and Seoul, and Korea. Exhibits um, across North America have included the Coda Gallery in New York, the Meg Gallery and Peak Gallery in Toronto, Art World Fine Art, and the Denson Gallery in Toronto. Did you, my question to you is, as you started your journey, did you visualize that path for you as an artist? Yeah, I I want to say in a very clear way that my you know my dream board was never something that I would sit and and write it out even though in my brain I did have those whiteboards where I was in, seeing and visualizing so I think visualization is the cap it's the it's the captivation of your dream and as soon as you've thought it then if you don't embrace it, how can you have a better dream? 
So I, I want to crash my, I want to break my dream. So when I've had the dream, then I, in my brain say, well, if I could dream that and it's achievable, what do I do next? And so I've never taken anything for granted, but I continually see and feel my presence in a greater capacity because I don't know any different. I don't know why it wouldn't be. The, who, is there a, is there a governing body over me that says, okay, you've hit your limit in this lifetime. There's no, there's no other place for you to go. When in fact, as a studier of human nature, and it is within our human nature, I believe that I am the only person who can put the limitation on me. So if you say no to me, that's just you. Mm -hmm. There, there will be another reason. If I get 8 billion rejections or no's, I stand even more powerful because I'm still holding the essence of me. Nobody can take that away from me. Nobody. So the judgment factor in, in our reality is the cruelest. It's the cruelest thing that there is on this planet. And hesitation is the, is the next biggest crime. So I will not hesitate to walk away. I will not hesitate to move myself into a direction that I think will better suit and better fit. It means that perhaps what you have to bring to the table doesn't meet my needs or what I have to offer does not meet your needs. That's it. Uh, the art world can also be pretty indicative of you know the flavor of the month or who's who's the best and who's not the best it's a super critical place to be involved in but it's also the place where you become so destined to reveal the true nature of yourself of your soul that there isn't anyone who can take that away and if you allow that to happen then you've never been in your truth hmm. you're the T Swift of the art world, Patricia. <laughs> I'd like her paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> that just came to me. I'm just saying you're the T Swift love of, of the art world because <laughs> you really, truly, um, as you do your art, you're, you're on this life journey in mm. your art and, and I'll get to the drumming and, you know, um, to the, to the next part of the conversation is that you've achieved such success You've won numerous awards. Um, you've got your hands in so many pots um, from philanthropy um, and, and, you know, you've taken on now drumming, <laughs> you're a percussionist <laughs> and you've woven drumming and percussion into your art. Um, so I guess my question to you is, and, and what I think is really inspiring is that there is no limit even though you've won all these great big awards and lifetime achievement, but we never stop. This is almost just a starting point. So I'd like, every, to, I'd like every, you to talk to that piece because, you know, as we go into award season with Women of Inspiration Awards, I see women coming in and stepping into that spotlight and, and feeling valued for their worth. But I know, because I can see that that is just the beginning of where the party really starts. And so maybe you can speak to that. Sure. So I, I'm always of the opinion, and it's my chronic opinionitis, that we only live in this moment. So the minute you put a tag on it that says, okay, lifetime's achievement done. Uh, no, it's it's a recognition of what's up, what's that to date. So right now I'm living in this moment and this is the best version of my life that I can, you know, operate under. There won't be another one of these minutes. I can't go back in time. So what I value is what I do with my time and where I in fact place my, my intention. And my intention is to continually purify this lifetime, this spiritual world that we live in, this, this ability for me to release much of the, you know, generational um, work that was done that I'm carrying seven generations back and seven generations forward. That's not woo woo. This is, this is really real reality. But I also feel that I'm 
I'm only scratching the surface of what I'm allowing myself to believe about myself and and to produce it. So if I carelessly make choices to condemn myself or waste my time in a pity party, then that's that's what I'm doing. Um, I live today in such a way that tomorrow I'm proud of my yesterday. That's the uh, that's the that's the saying. Glenn Morshower said that at our recent meeting, and I close my eyes and I think, what what a waste of time, pretending that what you've already decided to do wasn't good enough when you already chose to do it. So it's how do you manipulate your choices? but not necessarily to devour them into a place where it becomes like a mega challenge. If anything, it's, it's use your time wisely. And, and the idea of creating, you know, your, your goals, and, and I don't always like the word goals, but finding, how do you get there? Like, you know, it's like your roadmap. You know that if you're going to go to Fortino's or to a grocery store, you're going to get in your car. You're going to have to drive whatever. And if you need gas, you buy gas. And then you know you're going to turn left or you're going to turn right. And when you get there, you're going to park your car. It's a sequence of events to get to the destination. Now, what you woke up with that morning, I'm going to be making, you know, um, steak tartare, ch chicken cacciatore. I'm going to be making whatever. In order to do that, you need the ingredients. To get the ingredients, you have to follow the, the process to get there. Then you have the recipe. So life is like that. I think it's a matter of getting up and saying, okay, so the recipe for today is this. How do I get there? How am I going to achieve that? And if you require assistance from others, as we do by going to the store to get you know, the ingredients that are not being grown in our backyard, you depend on other people. You depend on your resources to make that happen. So I, I think foolishly, people think that something's fallen out of the sky and it's going to land on their lap right now. Here it is. You've got the, you know, you just won the lottery. Here it is. It's falling into your lap and you don't have to work towards anything to get there. That's that's not how the world works. And I think we all know that. And we're living in a, a moment in time where we have so, so much poverty. We have so many com complex issues socially that are happening around us that we're being, you know, pushed into different emotional states. And that can also dictate how we perform or how we choose to do things. I, you know, I have my project in Cambodia. I'm part of Reflections Initiative. We have our girls soccer team in Nicaragua teams. And where, where you focus your energy is not always going to be beneficial to yourself. You have to think of others. You must every single day look at the world around you and be prepared to be part of a solution, which is going to help shift and change perspectives and, you know, um, make a difference. So. So one quote comes to mind, women of inspiration, don't wait for opportunities. They create them. Right. And you were definitely a, I think a, a really great word for you, Patricia is a creator. You create experiences, um, memories, um, opportunities in all that you do. And so when we talk to, um, you know, this podcast, um, the Women of Inspiration podcast, you know, was really created to really share the stories of incredible women, just like yourself, because I know that there's a woman sitting on the other end of the screen or on the other end of this um, podcast listening. And I know there's going to be moments that she's going to say, I relate and I am not going to be a bystander in my life. I'm going to take control of it and I'm going to give it my all every single day. And so thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. What I'd love for you to share is how you keep it all together. <laughs> You've got your hands in the cookie jar like seven days a week, 24 hours a day. How does Patricia, number one, keep it all together? What feeds your soul? I love life. I I want to experience it to the fullest. I, I'm also looking at, I mean, you know this, I just turned 70 this year. So you go through, you know, seven decades of your life. And if you haven't figured out 
what works for you and what doesn't work for you by now, you know, you got to take a step back. So I value, as I said, I, I value, but I'm also super heightened. I have a super heightened sense of awareness of how much, you know, time there really truly is. It could be tomorrow. It could be a week from now. It could be 10 years or 20 years from now. I don't know. Logic, just simply using logic. I, I've accomplished maintenance on, on my life. And while I spend my time doing a lot of things, there's also a, a, a guy, I have a very, very guided way of allowing myself not to be manipulated. And I will walk away from situations. I will not expose myself for the sake of being in the room. I will value where I'm at. And I, and I think that, you know, and just for a second, going to the drumming, I'm, I was really lucky, you know, three years ago to reconnect with, you know, a friend, a longtime friend. And what that engaged in me was a desire to drum because he's a professional drummer. And when I realized I had that calling that there was something there. I acted upon it. But once you make a decision to do something like that, you're all in. And if you're not all in, then you're just, you're just, you know, percolating. So you won't be real. You really won't be good at, at it if you don't go all in. And I had the desire, the passion. I really, really wanted to do this. So when I sit behind my drum kit, I have two. I am not using it as, as a mental or emotional therapy. I am fine tuning that which is already inside my nature and mm -hmm. loving music so much that I can create an ambient. I can, I can create a place where I am participating in a very organic way the release of the beauty of the vibrational energy that already exists and has pre-existed in our universe. Music is very, very, very much aligned to, to the, to the magnetic resonance of, of this world. So it's, it's when you hear it, you hear it from your soul space. You don't hear it sitting there going, you know, damn, 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 this happened. And I'm so mad at you and crash, crash. That's not it at all. It's an expression of the beauty that exists inside of you. And you're complementing it in your way to the world. So I think when you can harness, it's as if when I'm painting, I'm not stabbing my canvases. I am so in a, in a state of joy, of a state of of bliss that I have the tools and the vehicle to be able to express that circumstances around me might all be going to hell shit in a basket sorry but I'm not going to allow that to be my expression uh-uh and I think that's the difference I think when you put your your mindset on clearing and healing the pain or suffering the cessation of suffering by going to that state or that zone of 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 Zen, that's the way you heal. Art is therapy. Art is the healing in whatever form it takes place from dance to painting, photography, name any one of them, sculptured, bowling for heaven's sakes. You are allowing yourself to be fully expressed in a way that, again, I will, I'll preface this as well. I have been a studier of multiple things, including various religions. I have spent over, you know, 30 years studying the foundation for the preservation of the Mahayana tradition of Buddhism, the Center for Compassion and Wisdom, the Hanmi Esoteric Mystery School of Buddhism. Uh, I, I have taken the time, I've studied the Bible, I, I the Zohar, the Danya Maimonides, like the, the Judaic esoteric books. When you take the time to, to, realize the omnipotence of this world you become much more inclined and aware to realize your significance in in your place in the world and also that you know and again is it god is it life that there there is that and when whatever you want to name it call it believe it that 
is something that is centered inside of you. And those rules, those writings, those teachings that have all been written from for eons and eons and eons are there for a reason, <laughs> you know? So if you can find time to pay attention, to find your calling, to, to find that resource that will be the trigger of that inside of you, that will guide you to what your next steps may or may not want to be, but it will give you a place where overall the golden rule is pretty much the golden rule. You know, what you see in like, what you see in me that you don't like is what you don't like in yourself. I want others to treat me the same way I want to be treated, treat you. I mean, those, those are the essence of ourselves as humanity. So when I think about my work in Cambodia, or even in Nepal, Sermon Hillary Foundation, what work we're doing to the to the school in the Solo Kumbu Valley, we are we are tackling, energizing, and supporting human beings on this planet who have also got a desire to move ahead for themselves. We recognize that. Mm. I can't speak on the mental illness factor that exists. We live in a country here, you know, where there are homeless people living literally half a mile up the street from us and in their tents, and it's like minus 20 degrees, and you you know this in Calgary. And how do I help them? What can I do? You know, when we had Help Humanity going on during COVID, we were out there feeding and taking food to, to those homeless people. Again, you know, not to get into the politics of it, but whose responsibility is it? But you still play a very important part. Your nature is to to play a role in it. So when I look at the magnitude and and of your dreams and your commitment where you go all in, and I 100% agree, you don't just dip your toes in a little bit. You have to be prepared to go all in right. um, to really carve your place but what tips can you offer because I, I find that that work-life balance there's only so many hours in the day how do you manage that from day to day when you've got such big enormous missions and visions um, and goals for the sake of goals uh, yeah. um, that you want to achieve I mean I think um, being high, highly, highly organized. So for many people, never mind your physical surroundings, but it, that's that's a place to start for, for people who have clutter. You declutter um, because if you are in a, in a place where things are organized, your mind stays inclined to be more organized. I use multiple tools. And I'm just, you know, like I have my, me, here we go. Like I my you expanded have a checklist. today checklist. So, I mean, this is, you know, a, a thing am I, I what letter am I? And this is only 830 in the morning. Am I already <laughs> number four? <laughs> this is for tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> so, so then I also think, you know, I'm old school. I have the day timer and I've already got 90% of it probably filled I maintain files on pretty much everything, everything to stay that organized. Mm -hmm. But I think valuing your time and giving yourself, knowing the commitment that what needs to be accomplished and setting that in that framework and finishing it. So many times, and I, and I'm a procrastinator, I have been a procrastinator where or I can start something and you know, right now I'm doing laundry. I've got the dishwasher ready to go. I have got this going, that going. 18 phone calls here that need to be made. Prioritizing is really, really relevant. It's really important. And then giving yourself space to to read, giving yourself time that it's time for you. And also designating, if you can, to others, um, not doing things that are not really the best and highest use of your time and it's it's a skill like being this organized really and truly has not happened overnight it's definitely been a skill I mean when I was a bank manager I you know I had I had the same thing I had a calendar with the appointments of those clients that were coming in to see me I had work that needed to be done but you're always you know recalling that that needs to be done now I'm 
maybe I am a little unusual in that I do have a capacity where my availability is somewhat limited, but I also have a mental capacity that is very clear. And that is also attributed to, and again, you know, asking me what maybe some of the points of, of how do I do what I do, meditate. There's no question. If you are not clear, if you have no clarity because you're so consumed with your own thoughts and your thoughts that everyone else is pouring into you, your own judgments, your own self-critical, you know, demon, then get some clarity. And, and I've had practice for almost all my life of being in prayer or meditation daily. It becomes habitual to the point where the synapses don't know any different. It's like, Hey, stop that. Stop that. Let's go. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's caring for yourself. Camera to me, like put your, put your world in a place that allows you to become fulfilled and, and you're not in the abstract of, crossfires on other issues that do not belong to you not my circus not my monkey not my monkey not my circus so I I like to think that where I'm valued and where I'm giving the value will have a greater outcome of achievement um but I also you know want to have fun so you, you have to be able to stay and play too so I hope that makes sense it makes great sense and I love your actually there's, there's a lot of paper things. There's like getting all your thoughts out on paper. There's the tasks, there's the to-dos, there's lists that, I mean, or I love how you started out clearing your space. As we start a new year, that refresh, mm -hmm. getting rid of like, like just starting a new book and a new chapter. So important. So I, I really resonate with that. And a lot of people forget to start with that decluttering that environment that you're yes. starting from, um, I think is really important. So I hope those tips are really helpful for those listening, because I can really resonate with that as well. I've got lots of journals and, and whatnot, and, and then ending off with meditation. So clearing your mind, clearing your workspace and clearing and making sure that you're organized. Don't set yourself up for failure. Yeah. Cellular reconditioning, you know, like you have to sleep. You know, I have, <laughs> I, I do know people who are pretty enlightened and, and literally they can live on four or five hours of sleep. Uh, you have to know your body clock. You have to know what you, what you need and, and stay within your cell talking to you. So abusing yourself does not help. And I think that makes, you know, that makes a big difference. You, you play in, you know, the playpen or the sandbox, that's sure that's fun, but put yourself down and say, okay, now here's what I truly do need in order for me to function and, and get that real sleep, get that, be in harmony with yourself, because that is, that's where the clarity will come in. That's where, you will find your calmness and hysteria or drama helps nobody. And especially if you are so unclear about your own feelings that you start dishing it out on other people, it's, it's going to become the obvious. Like those are your issues. They're not mine. I do not live in that headspace. So I want to be super clear if I have to resolve something and I know that I am comfortable with, with that, I will do it. And if it means taking my karmic scissors and snipping because karma has ripened, I will do that too. Because if it's not going to be healthy for me, it's definitely not healthy for you. So it's being smart about what it is that you truly do need to do in this lifetime. Mm. And 70 years of wisdom right there. Drop the microphone. <laughs> mic drop. Yeah. That's a mic drop. Yeah. And I, you know, Patricia, I think there is so much um, and that's why I wanted to have these conversations. Where are you now? The women of inspiration. I mean, you've achieved so much. Where are you going next? And that's what I want to talk about is, do you just wake up excited every single day for seeing that path so clear? And where are you going next? Like what, what are the goals for this year? What, what do you want to achieve in the next five years? Like, let's talk about that. I am. 
I think, you know, humility is a, a really big part of, of my world. And yes, achieving certain goals and being recognized is fantastic. I mean, it really is. It's, it's an honor, but it's not the cloak that I wear in order for me to, to move forward. So I don't attach myself to walking around with the labels. And again, I say this, you know, I, I'm, I was very fortunate to be knighted. I am a dame of the order of St. George. I've been in unbelievable situations where I've been recognized, you know, where most people would sit there and go, oh my God, like, how did that happen? And now I think about what is it that I'm doing that will really make a difference, the continuation of the art, but it's also the giving back. So I created the karmic art experience, which I've been doing now pre-COVID, and it's it's evolving into a place where I can bring X number of persons into a room, tabula rasa, you don't know how to paint, or you do paint, doesn't really matter, but I will take you through music meditation and, and my story and guide you to complete a painting that is actually a transformational piece of work that you have now dug deep inside because I'm not going to let you out of the prison <laughs> that I've just put you in until you do that. And it's and it's been remarkable. The results for people have been really pretty incredible. So I think the next little in the next little while I'm going to be guided towards you know doing a few of those per year I do not think it's going to become my be all and end all because I have other things that I want to accomplish uh, staying in the studio and painting working towards getting my artwork into very very prestigious more high level uh, gallery recognition that's that's on the table that's the, the part of my journey that I'd, I'd love to see happen working on you know several books completing thirsters and quenchers the black snowflake and then um, you know camera to me those are going to be really important and that achievement that goal is very um my what what will fuel me so is there a legacy piece do i want to walk out of you know this lifetime feeling that i've left the best footprint of myself i think so have I, have I, and will I use these vehicles between the art, karmic art experience, the books, um, to, to make that happen? That's probably it. And, but it will only reveal itself when it's supposed to. So I, I'm not the Houdini that can, you know, take the, the magic wand and say, oh, yes, I know this. I intuitively know that I am predicting there's a predictability inside of me and an inevitability that these things will happen if I do the work and if I stay clearly focused. So this is my intentionality right now to stay on that path. And, you know, like Dr. Joe Dispenza, you, you sort of put it out there and you're going to show up. And I think this is for me, I'm putting it out there and then one day I'm going to show up and it's going to be there. Will I, be excited about it absolutely i'm excited about every day because i do not know what every day will bring and certainly there's there's you know sadness and there's and loss i mean we I recently just lost a very good friend and and that's an emotional smash because that's you know you, you do not like losing the people that you love um and and yet we have to be smart to know this is reality. This is the way the world works. It's life and death. You're in and you're out. So what are you wanting to do with the time that you're in? Um, give it, give it some, some love, give it, give you love, see yourself as love and become so, so embraced in, in how incredible you are as a human that you really don't care what anybody else thinks. And when you can get that in your head, oh my God, life is just that it is it is there and you manage it the way that you want it to be managed and what's unfortunate is if other persons take things in different directions that's again in their mind mm. that's you're just you know but acting according to what's best for the 
for the overall is also super important. So the, the mindfulness piece is really important. Yeah. And to really be clear and focused and to not compare. No. Right? Easy for us to compare us in the journey um, to other people on their journeys. And it's really important to, to not compare um, or use comparison as inspiration going, you know, I really admire <laughs> what Patricia is doing here and here and here. What can I take that is going to inspire me to be the best version of myself? Oh, Monica, I have to tell you, I have met over the past decade, so many incredible human beings. And, and specifically, if, if I'm speaking about certain women, I right now, I I have goose pimples thinking about their stories, their lives, their accomplishments. We there's, you know, you raise the bar for yourself. Mm -hmm. And again, and this is part of the credo for Universal Women's Network. You know, you want to raise the bar for other people, other women um, and men. But it, there's an isolation factor when your ego is is got to be stroked. It just is. And if that's what you're looking for the the oh you know i want i want this and it's i want everyone to see how important i am or you know that i accomplished that then that your reason for doing it is is backwards mm -hmm. it's, and i think that's that's the part of my life that i learned i mean i was a bank manager when i was 25 years old i didn't care what anybody thought and everyone thought i was crazy but i knew the lessons that i went through that i i did not dictate that i was better or worse I just simply wanted to to manage to get through, but I I felt my destiny was that I was born during this cycle, uh, that I obviously came in a woman's body, that I must have something to accomplish. I was not fueled by a very strong dominant mother. We I did not have that kind of encouragement or the opportunity to go through, you know, someone planting me up in a university academic you know, space until I, until I actually had to get a job, then I could pay for my own education. So how you come to this world, but I never, you, you, you throw no stones at it. This is what you're handed. This is what you're going to deal with. And this is what you're going to make or, or break. And I, I'm, I'm proud, not even, I don't like pride, but I'm happier to know that there are women who have converted, you know, their, their suffering or their stories that have been damaging into a place where other people can can either learn or or they can see you as not being a victim but that you are courageous enough to become you know a harbinger for for change there's there's ample tools in this world that uh, women have access to and if they seek or desire to to make that change then, then maybe somebody will, if they hear your voice and that's the voice they needed in that moment, just to say, okay, I can do this then, you know, then, then you've accomplished something. I don't know if every single day I'm really making that much of a difference in the world, but in my brain, the fact that my intentionality is to, to make other things happen and thrive, then I'm seeding it energetically as well. My, my vibration if I financially can make a change or support as we do, then then I'm doing it that way. And energy is also a currency that has energy, money, magnetism. So we we attract and we detract. People must learn their nature. Find your nature and and be truthful to your nature. Maybe you won't. I won't be a saxophone player. I like saxophone, but I won't be one. So why am I sitting there? you know, having pity parties about not playing the saxophone. That's not, so put your energy into the thing that you know you you can manage. You have a talent. Everybody has a talent in some way, shape or form. Even not having a talent is a talent. <laughs> so Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> so your story doesn't, um, every woman has a story. Your story doesn't define you, it empowers you. Yeah. And right from the very beginning, starting Women of Inspiration Awards, the power of the stories and the women that are sharing the stories on the stages, on the podcast, like yourself, 
There's such wisdom and power that is fueling somebody. And I've always said, it's like a ripple effect. We have no idea who's listening on the other end that needs to hear it. And so I've always encouraged everyone that's listening to the podcast, share the podcast, share this wisdom because, and I even stop us in the green room and say, save it, Patricia, because we've got lots to talk about and how it comes out. Sometimes in our conversations, we can't repeat it again as, as perfectly as it's supposed to come out. So anyways, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your, your story, for being such a champion um, and, and a real role model. I mean, when we talk about you know, how you might've grown up or how I might've grown up. I wasn't surrounded by role models like yourself. You know, like there just wasn't access to it. Mm -hmm. um, not that there wasn't role models. We just didn't hear about their stories. We didn't see them. And we are living in a great time now where we can tap into that wisdom. And, and that's why we're doing the Woman of Inspiration podcast to share those stories, to share those wisdom, to share the incredible women and the leaders just like yourself. So thank you so much for um, joining us for this special episode of the Woman of Inspiration podcast. And I know I'm going to have you back, Patricia. Oh my gosh. I appreciate that, Monica. And I appreciate you. I'm looking forward to what this year for the Universal Women's Network is going to do. I know there's, you know, the big event in April and uh, certainly that role model is going to be a worthy story for many women and her husband. So, you know, this is a time that we need to pay attention and focus in 2024 is, is a positive year. It's going to be a good year for many. And I know that we didn't even tip the iceberg on the role that men play to champion for women. Um, it, it's going to be a big piece of it because we haven't provided that opportunity to really welcome them into that half of our population to how, what is your role? We need both people at the table. So um, Patricia, I am super excited as well. And I thank you for joining us for the podcast. I thank cannot you. wait to see you in person <laughs> and um, any last final words for our listeners today. Wow. Um, ooh, I think I've sort of, um, said everything I can think I should say. I'm loving the idea that we can do more. I think if anything, if you think you've hit your your cap, you haven't. Because if you can think of a cap, you, there's something above it. So just just keep pushing the envelope. <clears throat> and the more you the more you feel happy, the more contentment that you have, the more clarity that you have, the greater your results are going to be. And camera to you. Camera to me. Camera to you. I love it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Patricia. You're welcome. And Thank you. That And, you know, I always end up the Woman of Inspiration podcast, and I know I've asked you this before, but Patricia, what is your definition of a woman of inspiration? Has it changed well, for you? I think everything, everything that, everything, oh my goodness, everything that I have seen I believe a woman of inspiration is someone who pays attention a to their inner soul, their essence, their nature. And a woman of inspiration never stops, never stops. Another mic drop moment that doesn't need to be any longer than it is. A woman of inspiration doesn't give up and she doesn't stop. Thank you, Patricia. You're welcome. Thank you, Monica. And and how can the listeners find you if you want to share how they can get a hold of you to learn more about the great work that you're doing? Um, how would that be? So I have a, a website that's being revamped again. It's um, patriciacarengeigich.com. So www.patriciacarengeigich.com. I'm always willing to to respond to people. And I do get a lot of people writing me at Pat gaigich at gmail.com i'm not really great at posting on instagram <laughs> i do have facebook uh so i'm easy to find trust me if you want to find me you can find me awesome and so i would encourage actually um if you reach out to patricia just kind of let her know great podcast 
let her know where you heard it because then she can dive right in and know what we talked about. But I just want to thank you, Patricia, and of course, um, all of the women um, and men that are listening um, to really take these words of wisdom, share it widely. You never know who needs to hear this message. So thank you so much uh, for joining us on the Woman of Inspiration podcast and um, really filling my bucket and inspiring me even more, Patricia. Um, so blessed to have you here today. I appreciate that. Thank you, Monica. Thank you.